Alright, oh, hello everyone and welcome to AEW Discussion. I'm your host, Nate, I've been Snuggy and Doug. And today's episode, I'm going to be discussing Rampage, May 20th, 2022 episode. So last week, there was no discussion on Rampage. Unfortunately, Rampage been moved to a different time. I missed the uh, live broadcast and, well, I wasn't able to catch up on it in time to get a video out when I wanted. So last week was a week off for Rampage, but we are back this week. And with that, we're going to get to the action of this episode of Rampage. Starting with Alison Black versus Ipo Uno, uh, number 10 of the Dark Order, and Fuego del So. This was a pretty solid match to open up the show, and, um, you know, with the House of Black being showcased and getting another win. After the match, um, there was uh, an appearance from Death Triangle, and that little, and that appearance there set up, or set the stage for their showdown, which will happen at Double or Nothing, and, you know, hey, it did it all without things turning into a big old brawl, which, you know, wasn't necessary, so, Jalbo on there. Um, another match added to the double or nothing card. Sean Spears versus Big Demo, and most people might not be familiar with Big Demo. I don't know how many people remember Killian Dane in NXT. Um, interesting too how he stayed in NXT predominantly, never really moved to the main roster. Or, well, he was on the main roster as a member of Sanity, and then I think he got pulled back to NXT after that, but, um, nonetheless, new name, uh, doesn't have the bit, doesn't have the long hair, still has the chest hair though, so. Uh, but Damo, not a former world champion in any major promotion, so good choice to bring in for this uh, for this role in terms of bringing in an unknown big guy. Uh, he knew his assignment and he made Spears look good. Short match, yes, and predictable as well, but it worked in terms of building up Spears, building, or giving Spears a win um, as he steps into a steel cage against Warlow next week on Dynamite. Chris Stanlander versus Red Velvet, and Stanlander kicked out of Velvet's finisher and managed to keep her down for the three count and picking up the victory herself. After the match, Hogan and Velvet attacked Stanlander, but Ruby Soho ran down to make the save. Uh, Cargo then kind of got herself into the fray, only for Anna Jay to also insert herself as well too. So fun match and fun little post-match segment. Uh, a, this match gave both women a great opportunity to show how much they have improved. Since joining AEW, Red Velvet especially, um, she's always been charismatic, but this new role that she has found herself with Jay Gargill being a part of the baddies, it's helped elevate her and shown off even more of what she can do. She's up to her aggression, her offense looks, you know, excellent as a result, um, and she, you know, she has chemistry with Jade and Gargill. They mesh very well together, um, as well too um so after the match so statlander moves on in the tournament uh, unfortunately velvet does not um but tony j cargo will defend the tbs title add them or nothing against anna j so there's that as well too so pretty eventful segment right there and then the show concludes with uh the blackpool combat club uh John Moxley and Brian Danielson versus Dante Martin and Matt Seidel. And the first half of this match was all about punishing Seidel and Martin, but the second half was all about Seidel and Martin showcasing their wild aerial moves that they can hit from any angle and anywhere in the ring. The crowd was in there every second and chanting for everyone. Uh, Mock and Martin kicked out a 1 DDT, but Danielson and Moxley took them down with elbow strikes before Mox hit another paradigm shift for the win. This was definitely the match of the night. Uh, Jericho Appreciation Society attacked um, after the, as the show went off the air. Basically, a massive brawl broke out. Um, Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz did show up, so I don't know how well it was shown that they were there, but yes, massive brawl uh, as the show went off the air. Danielson did get his leg caught between the ramp and the stage. It was not shown on the broadcast, but AEW did release the video to YouTube, uh, so it is there. Uh, there is speculation that this could be a work you know a fake injury um hopefully um it you know hopefully i mean honestly i hope it is but see if it is a real injury hopefully it's nothing serious because anarchy in the arena which honestly sounds a whole lot cooler stadium stampede was cool i enjoyed it but given that double nothing's not in a stampede it's in an arena it makes more sense to have anarchy in the arena um, but nonetheless, though, hopefully Danielson's not seriously injured if he is, uh, as the Jericho Appreciation Society versus Blackpool Combat Club is starting to heat up now that they have inserted themselves into this feud. Um, quick and effective way, really, um, to close out the show. Um, 
and can, or not close on show, but build up the to build up this feud between some of the newer factions in AEW. Uh, you have veterans, legends, and young talents. Um, so there's quite a few potential combinations. Double or nothing is next weekend, so perhaps you know after Anarchy at the Arena, um, things kind of continue. Uh, with the Blackpool Combat Club and Jericho Appreciation Society, kind of, these guys kind of mixing and matching, pairing off and everything else. Granted, uh, BCC would be at a disadvantage numbers-wise. They only have three members. Jericho Appreciation Society has five. Um, so, I don't know if Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz would stick around as a result, but I think it's entirely possible when we get a Yuta returns to AW, he might, you know, if this feud's still going on, he might insert himself into the mix as well, too. And, um, yeah, with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of AW Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.